Having spent last summer exploring some of Cornwall's lesser known bays and harbours, we decided to go a little further afield and see if we could discover some of Devon's coastal secrets. The county has so many huge boating centres along its coastline. Torquay, Brixham, Dartmouth, Sulcombe and Plymouth, home to countless thousands of boats that I thought it would be impossible to find anywhere off the beaten track. Surely every bay, cove and creek would be crowded with boats. How wrong I was. I don't know where the actual boundary lies, but for me, the Eddiston Line always marks the crossing from Cornwall to Devon. Falmouth, our home ports, about 30 miles due west of here, and Sulcombe Estuary, due east, about the same distance. I tend to pass by Devon a lot and never really explore it, so I'm hoping on this trip to do something different, to actually explore some of the little rivers, estuaries, and perhaps find some interesting quirky places, anchorages and moorings, which until now I hadn't known about. But by the time we'd reached the Devon shore, conditions had already changed and our first landfall didn't go quite as planned. This is uh, Hope Cove. It's just around the headland from Sulcombe and as different to Sulcombe as anything could be. Quiet, sheltered little cove. Perfect place to get shelter in Easterlies. Unfortunately, we've come in, we, we had planned to go ashore, but uh, unfortunately we've uh, come in here and the sea is rolling straight in here. We've tried anchoring, we're holding an anchor at the moment, but um, we're not going to take the dinghy ashore. We're going to head round to Sulcombe where it's going to be more sheltered. Not a great start to our exploration. Well, it was too choppy for us really to stay at anchor in Hope Cove, so we'd just come round the corner, along the headland into the Sulcombe Estuary. Flat calm here, beautiful. There's a beach here with nobody on it, so what we're going to do is anchor up, take the dog ashore, because he's been on the boat all day, and we'll do a little bit of exploring of the coast path before we head into Sulcombe for the evening. So even here in the busy Sulcombe Estuary, it's possible to find your own private beach. Maybe not the largest of beaches, but enough to make Jojo happy. The next morning, while it felt like every boat in the estuary was on the move towards the sea, we headed upstream. Quickly, the bustle of Dartmouth gave way to a different world. Tiny riverside villages, then just rolling Devonshire countryside. Sometimes if you want to find secret Devon, it's not where you go, but it's when you go. This is one of the busiest Saturdays of the summer, but it's only seven o'clock in the morning and we're the only boat that's moving on the river. It's beautiful, it's tranquil, it's calm, and it's all ours. The dart is navigable as far as Totnes on the right tide, around 12 miles upstream. As soon as you leave the town, you enter another world. Green, lush, tranquil. The river meanders lazily through deep, rich Devonshire countryside. For almost 90 minutes as we headed upriver towards Totnes, we were the only boat, apart from an occasional early morning angler. Now this really is one of Devon's hidden secrets. Well, we got to within about uh, a mile of Totnes, but it's a falling tide. We're already about two and a half hours after high tide, and we're going to run out of water, so we've turned round. But what an amazing start to a Saturday morning. This gorgeous, gorgeous river, and it's all to ourselves.
After the tranquility of the upper reaches, we arrived back in Dartmouth. Just as the parade of boats for the classic Channel Regatta was about to leave, and the river was hectic. A massive contrast to our early morning cruise. As well as being a major sailing centre, Dartmouth is also well known for its galleries and for championing both local and British art. Well, we're just leaving Dartmouth now and I think it's proven to me that even in the busiest of boating centres, if you look hard enough, you can find your own private space. But we'd had a taste of what was on offer and were keen to keep looking for some of Devon's other secrets.